Hello everyone, welcome to our first pre-recorded quarterly business meeting. We have a, a number of items to share with you today, but uh, first of all, just to let you know, Sandy and I are doing pretty well. We got a little, we're, we were a little bummed out in the uh, first part of April because we couldn't go to Florida to celebrate our daughter's 40th birthday party. And so we were a little bummed about that, but we made it through and did some FaceTiming and actually did some gaming through FaceTime. So it was, a, it was still a good time and a good birthday for her as well. We all enjoyed it. Uh, just this past week, the overseers heard eight testimonies from candidates who would like to become members of Bethany. And so what we are working on right now is setting up some pre-recorded testimonies that we will share over hopefully the next few weeks and uh, then able to uh, vote, have our members vote on it after a while. So actually there's nine so altogether that would like to, uh, that are candidates for membership here at Bethany. And so we're really excited about that. There's also, there's a ton of ministry activity still going on. And uh, Pastor Kim and Pastor Joe are going to share some of those activities after I share the financial update. And so I'm gonna pray right now and for our meeting and for uh, just a good day today as well. Father, we thank you for the blessing of the stage, just for the beauty of the day and the sun. And uh, we thank you for your creation, how it shows us your invisible qualities. It shows your faithfulness every day when we see the sun rising and, and at night with the moon. And so we thank you, Father, for the blessing of this day. We thank you as well that there are no boundaries, even though we're bound, uh, we have separation from each other, uh, there are no boundaries with you. We used to be separated from you, Father, but through Jesus, we have been given new life. And we thank you for that life. And so we, even though we're separated as the body of Christ, we are still of one heart and one mind, especially one spirit, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so we're excited for what's happening as far as how God is working here at Bethany and ministering to people. And uh, we're exciting that, excited because God still loved us even though we were separated from him, he sent his son. And so we can go out and still love others. We can extend grace, we can extend mercy and forgiveness just like God did. And how that does cross boundaries, even though we're distant right at the moment. And so Father, we thank you. We ask that you give us wisdom as we uh, speak today, uh, going through the financial information being with Pastor Kim and Joel as they communicate as well. And uh, we just ask, Father, that uh, be just the communication would be clear and that if there's any questions, we'll be able to answer them. And uh, we turn this meeting over to you in your name. Amen. Here is a review of Bethany's finances through the end of March. You'll notice in, in the upper left, we have giving versus expenses. So giving through March is $56,589. Expenses are $73,645, which means that expenses were higher than giving by $17,056. If you look to the right of that column where it says average per month, that gives you the average giving over the last three months, as well as expenses and the difference. So right now our giving per month is under expenses by almost $5,700. Now, if we look at the bottom half of the page where it says fund balances, just wanted to give you uh, an update on where we're at. So on January 1st, funds for covering operating expenses were at 40,798, designated funds at 36,748 and in-out funds at 5,182. So total in the bank with checking and savings accounts, our total was $82,728 as of January 1st. Okay, now let's look at April 15th and where we are at currently. Funds on April 15th for operating expenses are now at 21,934. Designated funds are at 35,768. In and out funds are at 5,162. So a total of $62,864. And the main reason why we are $20,000 less 
than January 1st is because uh, we have had savings available to help cover um, our difference in giving. So at this point, we have $21,934 left for covering operating expenses. And that again is through the middle of April. Now what I'd like to do is talk about what's going to happen for the rest of the year. I just kind of came up with an estimate just to show you, kind of have a, an idea of what could happen through December 31st. So a couple things that will affect our expenses for the year is that Pastor Kim's salary is paid through May 31st, as after that he and Vicki will be moving up to Lac La Flambeau. So as of May, excuse me, as of June 1st, our expenses will go down by approximately $8,000 a month because we will not have a salary to uh, pay out to Pastor Kim. So basically, if you look at the upper right, I show, now this is all estimated based on averages. So 2020 expenses and giving, again, this is all estimated through May 31st, giving would be at 94,315, expenses would be at 122,742 which leaves uh, uh, expenses would be over giving by 28,427. And then I've calculated expenses and giving from June until December 31st. Giving would be at 132,041. Expenses would be at 115,838, which leaves giving over expenses by $16,203. So now if I take those totals, and just bring it out to an estimated what giving expenses would be through December 31st. Giving would be at approximately $226,000. Uh, expenses would be a little over $238,000, which leaves uh, giving under expenses by $12,224. So basically from June to December, we would make up uh, some of that difference of that $28,000 through the 31st, we would make that up, uh, $16,000 of it, and have uh, that go back into savings. However, at the end of the year, we would still be, expenses would still be under giving by $12,224. So I hope that makes sense. Now, the, the thing is, is that this is an estimate. Things that could affect it are, are the biggest one would be giving. You know, right now everybody is affected by this co-virus and, and employment issues, or unemployment I should say. So giving may be less than uh, what we have estimated here. Expenses might be more or less. Uh, again, again, giving could be more than what's estimated as well. So again, this is kind of um, a picture of how we can kind of see what's going to happen through the end of the year. Uh, again, this is all estimated. Uh, through the years, God has provided. Matter of fact, the last several years, he's over-provided, probably preparing us for this time, this season, where we have a giving that's under expenses. And so we praise God that we do have the funds available to cover it. And so we just... Uh, um, Hopefully giving is able to uh, sustain what uh, the current levels and also hopefully we can have uh, our, re our expenses, uh, hopefully they'll be able to get reduced again over time, okay? So if there's any questions, Pastor Joel will probably answer them at our Zoom meeting that'll be on Sunday night. I also want to um, bring up one more thing is where are we are at with our above and beyond fund. And so basically funds dispersed through April 20th. We have several line items there. It's short-term missions. Uh, we, we've dispersed $30. Philippines Children's Home, $1,600. Pastoral support for the Philippines Church, uh, $500. Church plant for Casey Schiffelbein, 2500 
and a community outreach $38. So that total dispersed to date is $4,668. Again, our goal for above and beyond is $40,000 for the year. Um, again, with the situations that are at hand right now, uh, that might we might not reach our goal, but you never know how God can provide. And so, um, anyway, that's where we're at at that point for our financial uh, review. And if you have any further questions, uh, you can, again, ask uh, Joe and Kim about it tonight at the Zoom meeting, um, or uh, we can get back to you at a later date and actually do a uh, email. Now I will turn this over to Pastor Kim. Hi, Pastor Mark here, and just give an update about the youth ministry. Um, recently, with everything being shut down and schools being shut down, we've been doing Zoom meetings, um, which has been really fun. We've had about an average of like 13 kids coming, and it's really good to connect with them that way and just get to catch up on their weeks and encourage them and uh, just share what's been going on. Um, some fun things that we've been doing in there is we've been doing almost like a weekly show and tell time where everyone just shows us different things in their room. So <laughs> we've learned a lot about some of the, the collections a lot of our kids have and there's a lot of knives and Nerf guns out there. So that's been fun to see. And um, we've been trying to just keep in touch with them and um, a lot of them have been pretty discouraged with school being closed down, especially our seniors have been having some difficulty with that and it's it's been a challenge for them to just think about losing their senior year and um, what the future is going to hold for them but we've seen some good things too a lot of kids have been expressing a lot of ability to connect with god more and spend more time in their bible and praying and they've been able to articulate a little bit more what they've been learning so that's an encouragement to see and it's great to great to hear those each week um, our future plans for now is we're just going to keep doing zoom meetings every week um, about an hour every wednesday night and just keep in contact that way we're also going to set up um, some sort of uh, messaging system i think in discord where we can uh, just keep in touch during the week and share different things that might be going on prayer requests anything that anything that's on their mind during the week and we've been able to keep in uh, touch with some of our leaders this way too. They all join in the Zoom calls and uh, keep it in touch that way. And um, currently, uh, it's a lot of New Day and going forward into the summer, we're losing our only Bethany youth leader. Um, so it'll be all New Day at that point. So going forward, we can, we're looking forward some representation from Bethany and um, in, in youth ministry that way. And just to we look forward to being able to meet again in person whenever that is and um, hopefully we'll be able to do some fun stuff this summer too but we'll just see on that so um, we can definitely use prayer for the students as they go through school from home and the end of the school year that's coming up and everything that that it's gonna look like how different it is and the challenges that come with that and um, just continued growth that way uh, there's there's a lot of different different things going on and whenever life gets a little crazy it can get challenging so prayer for prayer for them in that, that area so thanks Bye. well solomon said a man makes his plans but the lord controls his steps and i think we've all found that verse to be true during these last uh, several weeks now i had my schedule all laid out i was planning over April and May to basically get out into everyone's uh, home, all of the Bethany family that has served faithfully over all these years. And I wanted to get out, just personally thank everyone for their dedication to Bethany and to just encourage them to continue the great work that God has, has done through this church. Well, that lasted for about two days. And uh, then we uh, found out that the coronavirus was out. And so, as I said, uh, we, man makes his plans, but the Lord controls his steps. So that was a disappointment for me. And uh, I had really looked forward to getting out into your homes. And so, but I, I just want to personally thank 
everyone from the Bethany family for for just their their faithfulness over over all these years. In terms of what I should share today, I think I'll just share personally what's happening with us. We're learning to wait on the Lord. We're learning to trust Him. It was uh, about two, three weeks ago, I, I woke up in the morning and my daughter had called and said, Mom and Dad, you should look at a house up here. In, in, uh, it was up in the Arbor Vita area, up near Lac de Flambeau. And so I got up in the morning and I, I just had this picture in my mind of someone holding a piece of a puzzle. And this person said, today, we're gonna put in a major piece in the puzzle. And that's exactly what happened. Vicki and I looked at a house. It was everything that we were looking for, but hadn't been able to find. And we have room to host pastoral couples in our, in our new home. It's a beautiful setup for that. We even have, uh, we're not on a lake, but we've got the Tomahawk River and a, and a pretty little creek running along our boundary. And get a load of this, we're three blocks from our four grandsons and so talk about God's provision we just felt like it was an amazing gift that God has has given to us so we close on May 28th provided everything can go through and uh, we are going to be selling our house and so you can be praying for that this is a uh, this is such a crazy time and those of you who have maybe move know this but it's it's a time with great anticipation and and looking forward to the ministry that god has and at the same time just beginning to really grieve uh being gone and and being uh leaving the bethany family but we hope we hope that we can uh as i said before we hope that you can look at us as being those that are just going out from here and from this ministry to continue the work and to expand the work up in the Lac de Flambeau area. So that's just a little bit about what's happening. And again, we, we love you, Bethany family, and we look forward to what God is going to do here. Thank you. Hello, Bethany. Welcome to our quarterly business meeting. This Sunday afternoon, it's beautiful out, and I'm trusting most of you are out and about enjoying it. But there's some very good things happening here at Bethany Church, and we'd love to help you be aware of them. Whenever I share a report, I think of winning, building, and equipping. It starts with winning the curious. Bethany Church is in the midst of crossing boundaries to share the life-giving God with our world, and we're doing that right now in the midst of the coronavirus and not being able to meet in large groups and on Sundays that has not stopped us from sharing the gospel. Just this last week, I found out about another star that can go up on the wall um, someone from my bridge group was able to share the gospel and they were able to pray to receive Jesus Christ as their saving um, saving grace. In addition to that, we are sharing our messages widely. The YouTube channel that our messages are shared on has had over 1,000 views in the last month. These people are watching our videos for an average of 14 minutes each. So people are taking in this content and they're taking in this life giving God. Now, certainly some of those are our own people, but we know there's new people that are hearing that message as well. In addition, there's been over a thousand views of our Facebook page and the interaction's been amazing. I've had feedback and comments that we've been able to share this life giving God with our world. Both the YouTube and the Facebook is giving us insight on how God is using this unique time to share the gospel unlike ever before. We're also building the convinced. Most every Sunday we've been going on location. We've been doing that on purpose to help the gospel come alive in the hearts of our people. If you think about the gospel of John, how many of the stories happened out and about? Certainly some things did happen in the synagogue and the temple. But Jesus met a woman at the well. He met Nicodemus at night. He met in the upper room and he was at an empty tomb. We are 
taking the messages and we're sharing them out and about because we believe that the gospel message in the gospel of John and throughout the Bible was not just for a Sunday morning. It's taking us everywhere. So we are getting many comments from you hearing how that has helped the gospel and the story of the gospel of John come alive. So we're finding that is a unique thing that we never would have thought of except for the coronavirus. In addition to that, we've had people grow in their faith through this time. In the last uh, little while, we've had nine people come to us to become members. So not before, since the coronavirus, nine people have come to ask to become members. And we are excited to share their testimonies. We are not going to be sharing those today, but in the next few weeks, you'll be hearing testimonies from these different people. Just short brief synopsis of a life that has been changed by God. Clearly, no video, even an hour, wouldn't do justice to what God has done in these lives. But we're going to share you with you just a part of what God is doing for life change. God is building his people. He's building the convinced. And finally, he's equipping the committed. I'm sure like you, Kim and Vicki have made an incredible impact on your life. I'm so grateful I've had this season and this time to work with them. I was thinking about this about a year ago as overseers, we started reading this book called Canoeing the Mountains. And in this book, it talked about how Lewis and Clark had a plan to go up the Rocky Mountains, portage across, and then just you know float on down and get to the Pacific Ocean to discover a new trade route. Of course, that's not what happened. But all that work getting up to the top of the Rockies is what prepared them for what is what they face next. In our season that we're going through right now, no one could have anticipated what we would face. But we're reminded that Jesus was with us for the times like this, and Pastor Kim has been an incredible mentor in my life in this season. To focus on the gospel, to stay on track with him, to allow our people to do the things that they've been called to do, and let them do it, and let me do my part each one doing their own thing as a body of Christ should. Vicki has been amazing as well. In just the last month, we've started doing our worship services again, and she's pulled in different people, incorporated them, and I believe our worship is as strong as ever. I praise God for Kim and Vicki and how they have equipped me and many others. Coming up on May 31st, set that day aside and we'll have other things leading up to it where we will be able to remember and recognize what God did through Kim and Vicki. I know I've been blessed and I can't wait to share with them what is going on. In the coming weeks, you'll find ways for us to do that. Now, clearly, because the season and time we're in, we may not be able to do all the things that we would have intended normally. But in some ways, maybe we'll have a farther reach and get more people involved than ever before. That's coming up on May 31st. Thank you, Bethany, for what you're doing. Continue to cross boundaries to connect to the life-giving God and be part of a transformational community. That's what Bethany is about, and I'm grateful that we can do this. God bless.